Hello again. We are um, completing this playlist after reviewing all the ratios, doing one sample problem, then another sample problem, and this is the last sample problem I want to present you with. And as you can see, we are going to, in part A, find a percentage of each item of total assets or total liabilities and shareholders equity. And this is called common sizing or vertical analysis. And it's called common sizing or vertical analysis because we recast, uh, in this case, our balance sheet in terms of assets being equal to 100% each year. And then we uh, take a percentage of the total assets of each one. So to make more sense out of it, if I took $180,000 and divided it by $3,340,000, I would find that cash is 5.39% of total assets. If I took 220,000 accounts receivable, uh, as a percentage of 3,340,000, I would find accounts receivable are 6, oops, 6.59%. If I took short-term investments, 270,000 divided by 3,340,000, I would find short-term investments to be 8.08%. Inventories, which is a lot bigger, uh, 1,060,000 divided by 3,340,000 is 31.74%. Prepaid expenses, 25,000 uh, is 0.75%, very small. Pro uh, plant and equipment, uh, 2,200,000. 2,585,000 divided by 3,340,000 is 77, wow, you can see where the company's assets are, 77.39% 77 and accumulated depreciation, since it's in brackets, will be uh, negative 29.94%. And if I added up all these percentages, they would come uh, to 100%. So notice I've common sized them, that everything is in a proportion of total assets. If I had done that for 2014, I would find that cash is 9, oops, point eight. 7% and that accounts receivable is 5.57% and short-term investments is 5.39% and inventories is 35.18% and uh, prepaids is 0.9% nine zero. Um, plant and equipment is seventy point zero two percent and depreciation is twenty six point nine three percent. Again, totaling back to 100%. Now, what this allows me to do, if you can see, is see that cash has declined in its proportionality. Accounts receivable has grown. That uh, short-term investments have increased. So maybe better cash management's going on. Inventories have declined. Prepaid expenses have declined. Uh, plant and equipment have increased, 
and depreciation has increased. So it allows me to see the shifting of the mix of assets. If I was to do the same thing for liabilities and shareholders' equity, remember liabilities and shareholders' equity is going to be 100% in both cases. And in 2015, I find that accounts payable is 1.5%, uh, accrued expenses 5.09, bonds payable 13.47%, uh, capital stock is 62.87% and retained earnings is 17.07. So that's the mix of liabilities and shareholders' equity. The previous year, accounts payable was 2.69%. Oops, you can't read that. Let's see if I can erase. Yes. 2.69%. Accrued expenses is 7.18. Uh, bonds payable, 6.82. Common stock, 63.56%. And retained earnings, 1975 so in each of these cases, the numerator was the particular item, and the denominator was total liabilities plus shareholders' equity. Again, you can see the shift. Accounts payable is shifted down. Accrued expenses is less. But where the big increase was, was in bonds payable. Uh, cap capital stock proportionately dropped a bit, and so did retained earnings. So as you can see, the... the structure of how uh, we um, support our assets has changed a bit. So that's common size or vertical analysis. In part B, we're going to do what's called looking at the dollar change and the percentage change for each item. And this is known as horizontal analysis. Because what we want to look at is between these two years, what the change is in dollars, and then what is the percentage change. So if I'm going from 2014 to 2015, I can see that the change in dollars was a decrease of 95000 and then if I wanted to express that as a percentage, I take 95000 over the base year, which is the oldest year, of 275000 and I can see that cash declined 34.55%, or $95,000. Accounts receivable, the change was 65000 It went up, so it won't go in brackets. But if I take 65000 over 155000 I find that the percentage change as accounts receivable from one year to another increased 41.94%. That's a dollar. Sorry, this is messy. Short-term investments changed uh, over the year uh, um, 120000 Wow was the dollar change and the percentage change if I take 120,000 over 150,000 I can see that it increased 80 percent for inventory uh, or for short-term investment sorry inventory um, the change was a total of um, $80,000. Okay. So inventory, oh, I'm going to put it over here. $80,000, because I'm running out of room, change in dollars. And then change in percentage for inventories was 8.16%. Uh, good news, prepaid, so there was no change, so no dollar change, no percent change. Plant equipment, uh, it increased 
$1,935,000 from uh, 1950000 to $2,585,000, $635,000 change, or 32.56%. And finally, uh, accumulated depreciation went down 25000 or 250000 I can talk, uh, or 33.33%. Decrease. Uh, doing accounts payable, the change in accounts payable was accounts payable decreased twenty-five thousand. Uh, so twenty-five thousand over seventy-five thousand is thirty-three point three three percent. Accrued liabilities went down thirty thousand, or fifteen percent. Put these in brackets since they went down. Bonds payable went up two hundred sixty thousand, or the change was wow one hundred thirty six eighty four percent. So bonds payable really took a radical change. Capital stock did increase three hundred thirty thousand, which is an eighteen points. Um, 6.4% increase, but notice since bonds increased so much more, um, they kind of overshadowed it. And retained earnings increased $20,000, or 3.64%. So as you can see, you can uh, look at the growth or um, the decline um, between the two years, finding the dollar change, and then also looking at it as a percentage change really helps you hone in on what's happening. So hopefully this has been helpful to look at both horizontal and vertical analysis so that you too can common size or um, horizontally analyze the statements.